In this video, we're going to talk about the idea of change of basis. Now, just to remind you, the idea of a basis is a set of vectors in which you can represent any vector in a vector space as a unique linear weighting of those vectors. And in particular, we're going to talk about ordered bases. So rather than just talking about a set of vectors, we're going to be talking about a list of vectors so that the entries make sense. When we talk about a change of basis, that's the idea of moving between different ordered bases in order to represent a vector in a different way. And that's something that comes up a lot in machine learning because different basis sets can have different properties and might lead to easier kinds of machine learning algorithms. You might think of deep learning, it turns out, as a particular scheme for learning really good bases such that simple linear machine learning algorithms can work. So let's imagine that we're in some vector space V. And let's imagine that we have an ordered basis for V. Let's call that ordered basis A. And A is going to be a list of vectors, say A1, A2, and so on. Then we can talk about the coordinates of a vector V in the basis A. So we would write that conventionally as something like this. So this is the vector V, but written in the basis A. And when we write something like this, we're referring to it as the coordinates of V. So what do I mean by that? What we're saying is that we can write V as a linear sum within this basis. So we would write, say, some alpha 1 multiplied by the basis vector A1 plus, say, alpha 2 multiplied by the basis vector A2 and so on. These alphas, we call those coordinates. And when we stack those up, that is what we get in the square bracket sub A. It's the representation of the vector V in the basis A. Now, when we write out this sum like this, we could, of course, write this out in a more compact way if we wanted. What we could do is we could construct a matrix. Let's call this matrix A. I'm going to put two lines under it to indicate that I'm talking about a matrix. And let's have this be constructed by taking the basis A and having each of those vectors be the columns. So we would have A1, A2, and so on. And the reason this is an interesting thing to do is we can take this and now write it in a vector form. So we can now say that V is equal to A multiplied by this representation of V in the basis A. So this is the coordinates of V in A, and this is representing that linear sum via a matrix multiplication. I'm assuming, in general, that we have a situation where this is a, a basis whose span is all of V, and so A is a square matrix say, whose inverse exists. What that means is that if I wanted to ask what are the coordinates of V with respect to the basis A, then I could get that by solving this linear system and saying something like A inverse V is the coordinates of V in the basis A. This also gives me a way to translate between bases. So you might imagine that we're in some situation in which maybe I have some basis A that is in, say, R2, where there's some pair of vectors that are linearly independent. Let's call these guys A. And maybe this is how Alice wants to represent points in R2. And then let's imagine that there's another basis B that's the one used by Bob. And this basis is the way that he wants to represent points in R2. You might reasonably ask, how can we take a given vector that lives in R2 here, some vector V, if we're representing that in Alice's coordinates, how can we turn those into Bob's coordinates? How can we sort of make the code book that translates from Alice's representation into Bob's representation? And it probably won't surprise you that we can set it up just like this where we make these equal to each other. So if they're both representing the same vector v, then we could say 
that we want to have the matrix A multiplied by V in the coordinates A needs to equal B, where B is exactly the same thing here, but for Bob's coordinate system, so a different ordered basis B. And then that is going to take the same vector, needs to be the same point, but represented in this other basis B. So this clearly gives us a way to translate between these coordinates without necessarily having to think in terms of the standard basis. If Alice has a set of coordinates and Bob would like to translate those into his language, into his basis, then we can multiply on both sides by B inverse. And so we can see now that this matrix here translates from the A basis into the B basis. Similarly, if we wanted to translate from the B basis into the A basis, so we had coordinates in B and we wanted to turn them into coordinates in A for the same vector, we could do it the other way around. And we would wind up with something that looked like V in the basis A is going to be A inverse V and then the coordinates in B. And so this matrix would now be the one that translates from things in B into A. Now let's generalize that and talk about the idea of linear transformations combined with change of basis. Let's imagine that we have some vector space V and another vector space W. And let's further imagine that Alice and Bob each have a basis in V and a basis in W. And so let's, let's call those bases A and B. And let's call those bases, let's say A hat and B hat. And let's further imagine that Alice has a transformation that takes a point, let's call it X in basis A and turns that into a point in her basis A hat, but now in W. And let's imagine, moreover, that that's some matrix M. How would Bob use this matrix? How would he use this transformation if he wanted to take his vectors represented by the coordinates in basis B and then apply the linear transformation M somehow and then get back into his representation B hat? How would we do that? Well, we can think of that as generalizing this kind of translation notion that we looked at before. So let's imagine that we start off and Bob has some representation of X that he wants to manipulate that's represented in B. So he has some point in B. This is the same location, and we could imagine translating that into the basis A using what we just did. So to do that, we would multiply it by the matrix where the columns are the ordered basis of B. So we'd multiply that by the both that matrix and the same matrix, but it's inverse for A. So we're hitting it with two matrices. One is the inverse of A and the other is B. What this does is it translates this vector X and basis B into the same location, but now in basis A. Now, this is a location, this is a representation that M makes sense for because it's in the coordinates A. It's in Alice's language, if you will. So if we were to hit this now with M, that is going to do the right thing as far as Alice is concerned and land us in the right location in the basis A hat. What we need to do now though is translate from A hat back into Bob's language, B hat. That is, we wanna take it from the basis A hat back into coordinates for the basis B hat. We're going to undo the thing we just did, but with respect to these hats instead. That means multiplying it now by A hat. That is the matrix whose columns are the basis vectors for the ordered basis A hat. And B hat inverse, which is the same thing, but for B hat. You can see what's happening here is we're starting with something in V in the basis B translating it into something that is still in V, but now in the basis A, performing the linear transformation. And then that linear transformation lands us in A hat 
from which we must translate into B hat. What we've done then is we've taken this matrix M and we've hit it on each side with the appropriate transformations. One is a kind of a forward transformation and the other is an inverse transformation. One thing you might imagine is that we're starting out with some V A and then some, and then we have a transformation from V in the basis A into W in the basis A hat. And this is represented by M. But we're starting out with V represented in the basis B. And so we first need to translate into basis A, then into M, and then back out into W in B hat. And that that is how we get from V to W in Bob's basis.